First of all, I just want to say that the APCCC has become the premier event in international kind of prostate cancer consensus engagement. Um, uh, uh, really just an absolutely fantastic meeting uh, in Lugano um, and a big, big credit to the organizers of the meeting. They've done a phenomenal job. Um, the you know, I was tasked with the, the question of how do you select patients for adjuvant therapy after radical prostatectomy and how, how to treat them. And this is an area of, uh, you know, evolving management and data and, and some debate. Um, you know, the, the, what we know is that there's been an increase in surgery in high-risk disease, and that's really led to increased indication for post-operative radiation therapy and its use. The question is, should we be using adjuvant radiation? And what does that mean? It means that there's no evidence of disease after prostatectomy, and that ma mainly means an undetectable PSA. Um, and you're really considering radiation for a significant risk of future recurrence, maybe due to some microscopic residual disease. Uh, and you know that's based largely on the pathology. And you're looking, hopefully, to improve local control and, uh, and prevent any dissemination or metastasis of disease. So that's what adjuvant radiation therapy is. We, we sort of need to define what is an undetectable PSA, and, and the, the talk I gave got into that a little bit. In general, most contemporary studies would define it as a PSA less than 0.1, but there's alternative definitions out there, including two or more um, uh, rises uh, in, in even an undetectable range, technically, so in the, we're using ultra sensitive assays for PSA. And there's some studies suggesting maybe the optimal PSA at which to trigger early salvage therapy may vary by underlying clinical pathologic risk of recurrence. So for patients with particularly high risk, there's some studies that might suggest let's use a, uh, a PSA threshold of 0.05 instead of 0.1. And so, there, they, you know, I think even, even defining what is an undetectable PSA, there is variability in different guidelines. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, further work is needed even on that front. Um, you know, adjuvant radiation, uh, although historically had, um, you know, data to support its use over observation for adverse pathologic features like T3 disease at prostatectomy or positive margins, um, despite trials showing benefit over observation, its use has remained quite low. I would say estimated at less than 10% of patients in, in the U.S. actually receive adjuvant radiation. And that, that's been supported by some reports from tr big trials like Radicals RT, um, uh, which didn't show on initial reporting uh, in the Lancet um, in 2020 any advantage to biochemical progression-free survival or freedom from non-protocol hormone therapy. But very, very importantly, there's been just recently an update in pre-proof form coming out shortly, uh, an update of that trial. And that's in Annals of Oncology. Uh, it, it'll be coming out. And in that study, um, you know, although there was no benefit in overall survival, there, there was a start, you know, a bit of a trend towards freedom from distant met benefit, which was their and their primary endpoint with a hazard ratio of 0.68 and a p-value of 0.0. Uh, 095. But if you look carefully at the paper, there was actually a statistical advantage in terms of cancer-specific survival. So prostate cancer-specific mortality, the, the hazard ratio was 0 0.33 in this update with a p-value of 0 0.044, actually significant. And it's really important for everyone to know that was their original primary endpoint. Okay, cancer-specific survival. They actually changed it to freedom from distant metastases. So I think this is going to cause some some debate and controversy. And you know, perhaps you know, when comparing adjuvant to early salvage, which was the basis of Radical's trial, is there perhaps a benefit for adjuvant? Um, can that be made? And, and you know, you have to put that into context of the eligibility of that study which was largely, you know, sort of moderate risk or, you know, uh, more favorable patients. You could be eligible for that randomization between adjuvant or early salvage if you had Gleason 7 disease uh, or if you had um, a pre-op PSA that was uh, 10 or higher. Um, it wasn't the very high-risk patients. In fact, the very high-risk patients 
were, were not that well represented in the trial. Um, you know, less than 20% of the patients had Gleason 8 to 10 disease, only 5% had node positive disease. And if you looked at two high risk factors, it was a real minority of patients. And if there's going to be any advantage to adjuvant radiation over early salvage, it's most likely limited to a subset of high risk patients. And there's a number of studies that uh, attempt to look at that in, in, um, in, in patients that have higher risk features like Gleason 8 to 10 or T3, T4 disease. And, and there is the suggestion of benefit. And retrospective studies also suggest benefit to adding radiation to hormone therapy in pathologic node positive disease. And there's even some data uh, uh, suggesting that there is a significantly lower mortality risk per unit increase in the number of positive lymph nodes. And some studies suggesting even four or more lymph nodes um, uh, uh, may have even more benefit. So, you know, I think this is really evolving. There's lots of new data that I've just uh, discussed. And the question is, in the future, can we more intelligently choose p uh, some patients for, for um, adjuvant radiation? And, and that really brings up the question of biomarkers, genomic classifiers, risk scores that can inform practice. And we're seeing big changes in NCCN guidelines where they're starting to incorporate these tools, including in the post-prostatectomy setting. Um, now, certainly you should only use these kinds of tools if they have the potential to change management. I don't think they should be ordered reflexively, right? But there's studies like Decipher, which actually may help identify some patients uh, most likely to benefit from adjuvant radiation over salvage radiation. Um, and there's some studies that have even suggested risk stratification models um, so that if you have a couple of high-risk features like T3, B, T4 disease, Gleason 8 to 10, node positivity, or perhaps a decipher score that's greater than 0.6, kind of a high-risk decipher score, if you have two more of those types of risk factors, perhaps there's really benefit to adjuvant radiation in that setting. So, you know, lots of evolution here. And then, of course, you have to add hormone therapy to, to adjuvant radiation. A trial that tried to look at this in the EORTC failed to accrue, and we're really sort of drawing uh, and extrapolating data from the, the salvage setting where there has been benefit to adding uh, hormone therapy to salvage radiation. Should we treat the pelvic lymph nodes if we're doing adjuvant radiation? Again, we're extrapolating from studies like NRGRTOG0534 that did show benefit uh, to adding pelvic nodal radiation. And if we're doing hormone therapy, how long should we do it? There is a study that was presented at ESMO, not yet published, Radicals HD. The Radicals trial had the Radicals RT part, the adjuvant versus early salvage that I already went over, and then it had the HD part, which was hormone duration. Should it be no hormones, short course hormones, long-term hormones when doing largely salvage radiation? Um, when comparing in a bit of a higher risk cohort, short versus long, there was some benefit to longer duration hormone therapy. So how does this apply to the adjuvant setting? I think we need more data. Um, and certainly, should we intensify hormone therapy, like adding uh, uh, an RP, right, um, uh, to, to standard hormone therapy uh, in the adjuvant setting? That, that's being investigated in trials like NRGG008, the Innovate trial that's adding apalutamide to radiation and hormone therapy. Um, and so, you know, I think that, that needs more trial work. Um, and, you know... Again, coming back to biomarkers and genomic classifiers and, and perhaps even multimodal AI, artificial uh, intelligence tools, can they help inform the use of things like hormone therapy uh, in this, in this post-operative setting? Well, we, we do see some data and decipher in the salvage setting um, where if you are of intermediate to high risk to cipher score, there's a benefit to adding the hormone therapy, but not if you're in the low risk to cipher score, maybe even some detriment in that setting. Um, and so NCC guidelines are, are actually incorporating tools such as Decipher to inform the use of hormone therapy with early salvage uh, radiation. And I think we're going to see some very exciting data at the AUA um, later this week uh, uh, looking at, um, you know, can artificial intelligence tools uh, based on digital histopathology-based machine uh, learning um, help with the choice of adding hormone therapy to salvage uh, radiation. So that's some uh, uh, data to really uh, look out for at that meeting. So maybe just to kind of summarize uh, the, the, this talk, which I think you can see it covered a lot of a lot of new data, a lot of uh, areas of controversy and debate and varying practice amongst experts as well. 
Um, you know, how, how would I summarize it? How, what, what's my practice like? Well, I generally favor early salvage radiation over adjuvant therapy in most patients, but most patients are those of more moderate uh, or, or intermediate risk, right? But I do think we have to really define early salvage and be a little stricter on the PSA because we know the lower the PSA, the better with salvage, right? So early should be early. And that means, uh, you know, in my practice, a PSA with two to three consecutive rises, even in the ultra sensitive range, that might trigger early salvage. And, uh, you know, certainly any numbers that are 0.1 or higher. And I would say that that's sort of similar, my definition of what's currently being adopted in NCCN and the radicals trial. I do, however, think we should consider adjuvant radiation and otherwise fit, motivated, very high risk patients with two or more. Uh, you know, higher risk factors like the, like I mentioned earlier, the T3B, T4, the Gleason 8 to 10, the node positivity and, and decipher score in the high, the high range. So over 0.6, those patients were underrepresented in the radicals RT trial. Remember that. And again, if there's going to be benefit, probably it's going to be in this higher risk subset. And if you're not doing adjuvant radiation, in this higher risk subset, then certainly have a lower threshold to initiate what I would call ultra early salvage or adjuvant plus radiation and monitor these patients with ultra sensitive PSAs and maybe consider a threshold of 0.05, as I alluded to earlier. Um, if you're giving adjuvant radiation, it implies it's high risk disease, most likely. And so I, I do treat not only the prostate bed, but the pelvic lymph nodes in most patients. And I typically tend to recommend a short course of hormone therapy. But again, maybe there's an argument for long term hormone therapy, depending on risk factors. And I, I refer to kind of the radicals HD trial, which we're still awaiting the publication for. And it, but again, we're largely extrapolating that hormone therapy discussion from uh, salvage or end early salvage trials. And if you want to, um, you know, uh, intensify with RPs, uh, you know, that's probably should be done on trial. Don't forget maybe considering genomic classifiers or AI tools to help with informed decision-making when it might change what you will do, right? Don't use it in all patients reflexively necessarily, but if it's going to potentially change what you're going to do, those are tools that are out there. Um, and ultimately our goal is to avoid or delay radiation, therapy and its potential toxicities in those patients where we can avoid it or delay it. But we also certainly don't want to miss an opportunity to cure patients who are at very high risk of recurring or guaranteed to recur. And, and that's where the consideration of adjuvant radiation um, uh, comes in.